Hello, everybody. This is Taka. I am here to tell you that single board computers are getting out of hand. They're getting wild. This is the Lati Panda Sigma. This single board computer has the power of a high-end Intel Nook with the form factor and expandability that you'd expect from a single board form factor. This thing has an Intel i5-1340P with 16 gigabytes of dual channel LP DDR5 6400 memory. Now storage on this thing is quite interesting. What you do is there are some screws here. You take off this back plate and it exposes four different M.2 slots. First is an M.2 B key supporting SATA and mobile data modules. Then we have two M2 M keys supporting up to eight terabytes of NVMe each. And then here we have an M.2 E key with our Wi-Fi module. Additionally, on top of the board right here, we have a SATA power and SATA data port supporting a single hard drive up to 16 terabytes if needed. Above that, we have a couple comms for some serial connection. Sitting right next to our 30 pin GPIO, we have two USB 2.0s and two USB 3.2 Gen 2s, two USB Type C's with both supporting up to Thunderbolt 4. We have HDMI 2.1 for display out, two Ethernet 2.6 gigabit ports, which is absolutely fantastic. 2.5 gigabit should be the standard for anything made recently, in my opinion. We have our DC jack, audio jack, and a place to put a SIM card. And really when it comes to the overall connectivity of this thing, I'm just scraping the surface. Just how I'm going to barely scrape the surface of what our sponsor Akamai Connected Cloud can offer you. You can use Akamai Connected Cloud to spin up your very own Linode with a wide variety of Linux distributions to choose from, in which you can easily host your very own Linux server in the cloud, or you can use their marketplace of one-click applications to get a specific service spun up with ease. They have a load of documentation. They have their own YouTube channel with tutorial videos, which I have a few on. And better yet, if you use the link down below and you are a new user, you can get a $100 60-day credit. Now, this is the website for the Lati Panda Sigma that we have here. We went over the connectivity. Just some more information on the CPU. It's 12 core, 16 thread in this small form factor here. We have some benchmarking, but we did run our own. And it goes over a lot of the uh, details of what you get. Unfortunately, the RAM is built in, so you cannot upgrade that. Rapid Chill, Whisper Sign, I can confirm that it's pretty quiet. It really only kicks up and you can hear it if you're running like high intensity benchmarks for a long time. The USB-C is on, it does support video out as well as the HDMI like we mentioned. And here is a lot of information on that expandability that we've already touched on. Now, when it comes to the operating systems, it does ship with Windows 11 pre-installed on it. It's kind of funny because it's not an active license of Windows 11. Which, this is a little hackable board, honestly, I don't care. It's not like an average consumer product. And when you first boot it up, there's no password or anything. You have like a Lati Panda default account. If you want to use the default install, you just add a password and find some script or something to take care of the watermark. Or, of course, you can see here they say it supports Ubuntu. Of course, it's going to support basically any Linux distribution considering it's an x86 machine and not a ARM CPU. You can see they have tutorials on Proxmox, Ubuntu, and setting up power on, as well as their BIOS and firmware, drivers, all that fun stuff. So if you're looking for a fun, hackable computer, this thing is pretty awesome. How much does it cost? 579. Honestly, that is not too bad. I checked out a Intel Nook 13 Pro, which I believe has an i7. That thing's nearly a thousand bucks. Right here is that 13 Pro that I checked out about a month ago. It's benchmarking really high, one of the highest scores at 10,2400. ,200. This Lati Panda is also benchmarking even slightly higher on the multi-core scores, which is a bit interesting, probably because the install, the Windows 11 install that comes on this thing is incredibly stripped down. There's like nothing in the recommends, recommended apps or anything like that. So it's a stripped down version of Windows. The single core score is a little bit lower, but again, it's a lower CPU. And frankly, for a single board computer, a multi-core score above 10,000 is absolutely bananas. Basically, in real world use using even professional software and heavy handed applications like video editors, OBS, maybe even ArcGIS, which I use off and on, is going to run completely fine on this thing. It's open, so cooling's not too bad. You can mount it behind your computer. It's on, honestly for daily use, this is a pretty good option. And of course, I'll leave links to this down below if you want to kind of go in 
and get some more of the uh, specific scores that it got through Geekbench. And of course, Geekbench isn't the only test. I ran Cinebench getting just above 11,000 on the multi-core score and about 1,600 on the single core score. But if we go back over here, is basically just under what they're advertising the uh, multi-core score benchmark to be, so they're pretty spot on here. And then kind of going into the graphics side of things, we ran 3D Mark, and it's an Intel machine. They're not known to be like gaming beasts, so this didn't score as well, giving us about 1,700, and specifically 1,500 on the graphics score. Now, how does this translate into actual real-world gaming? Can you use this as your gaming device? And honestly, at 1080p, yeah. You're not going to be able to play every game at high settings. Granted, a lot of the AAA and newer titles, you're probably going to have to drop down to lower settings and maybe even a little below 1080p. Playing lighter in games like CSGO ran really good. Playing something top down like City Skylines gave me absolutely no issues at all. Jumping into something like Fall Guys gave me a rather impressive frame rate of about 85 average running at 1080p. And we can see there, at least on this game, the GPU is cooking at a 99%. Not cooking as in heat, it's actually running pretty good when it comes to temperature. Sitting right at 72 degrees Celsius, even doing better when it comes to cooling than that Intel Nook 13 Pro. It's open concept, open design, so airflow is not as much of an issue. Playing something like Split Gate, I bumped up the settings even on this game to high, and it was running really good anywhere from 60 to 100 frames per second. And I've mentioned this in previous videos, this game isn't necessarily graphically demanding, but it's a good test because if it can run this game, it can run a lot of the kind of lower intensity games, and if something can't run this game, it's just not good. Again, some of the ones I tested were lighter, so they ultimately ran good. I did test some other more graphically demanding AAA type titles, and a lot of those were in like the 20 to 30 frame per second range. So don't buy this to be your like gaming machine, but when it comes to lighter games or even like PlayStation 2 emulation, this thing could be a wonderful option to go ahead and mount behind your TV. It does come with these little standoffs and how this case is or the, how the back plate's designed. You can like screw it to a wall. This would be a really good option to put on one of those like you've seen them the builds where people instead of having like a network server cabinet, they have a bunch of things mounted onto a board and that's kind of how they do their home networking. This would be a really good for that to use this as like your home automation server, your media server being that it is a Intel machine. They have fantastic hardware transcoding, really good for that. And speaking of really good for that, what do you think I should do with this little mini computer? I was going to throw like Proxmox on it and maybe set up a Minecraft server to go ahead and test it out, but I want to see what you guys have to say. Let's do another video with this, using it for what I think would be the best use case, and that would be a server. This thing would make an absolutely fantastic little server, whether that be hosting NAS software such as Unraid or just having like a base Debian server with like Minecraft and Plex running on it. Let me know what you think and what you want to see. For the price, for the connectivity and everything like that, this thing is fantastic. Mostly because it's like unlike a Raspberry Pi or something like that. You, th this you could use as like a primary computer or use it as an absolute beast of a little server unit. So with all that, do make sure you subscribe, ring that bell. We have a lot of cool stuff coming. Um, <laughs> People have been complaining about my audio quality, so I'm using this USB mic, which for some reason is working better than my Sennheiser XLR mic. With all that, have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.